Is Nintendo charging too much for their remasters? I mean, $60 for this? <laughs> So social media recently has gone ablaze after finding out that Donkey Kong Country Returns HD is $60. Because this is a remaster of a Wii and 3DS game that's like 10 years old at this point, why should we have to pay full price for something that frankly doesn't even look like that great of a remaster? There's so many missing graphical effects in the Switch version of this game. There's still time to fix them, but they are still issues nonetheless. But this is far from the first time people have have complained about the prices of Nintendo's remasters. There have been quite a few released over these past few years during the Switch era. Let's actually go down the line. Let's start back all the way in 2020 with the game that I really think started this whole kerfuffle, Super Mario 3D. All Stars. I remember there being rumors about this collection before it was officially revealed. We were going to get remasters of Mario 64, Sunshine, and even Super Mario Galaxy. These games were going to look so good and modern. And then that trailer came out, and they more or less looked exactly the same. Yeah, the resolutions were higher, Super Mario Sunshine even got converted to widescreen, but other than that, these were the same exact games. Which, you know, could be a good thing. Mario 64 was not available on Nintendo Switch Online yet, because the Nintendo 64 games hadn't come out at that point, and Mario Sunshine was finally available on a platform that everybody owned, you didn't have to pay hundreds of dollars on eBay, and Mario Galaxy got some more modern controls. That said, I don't blame anyone for being disappointed at the contents of this collection, especially if they already own the originals on other platforms. Also, where's Super Mario Galaxy 2? Why is Mario Galaxy 2 still not playable on the Switch? That is just baffling to me. Either way, you can't buy this game anymore, because it was only available for a limited time. I'm sure you can still find plenty of physical copies out in the wild for just the standard $60 price, but either way, this is just a confusing sort of of remastered collection, if you could even call them remasters. It's still a good collection to have, I don't regret purchasing my copy at all, but still, they could have been a lot better. Then, a few months later, Skyward Sword HD got announced for the Switch. Great, we were getting Skyward Sword on Switch, it was fantastic, I was really excited for it. In the end, I still loved the game for what it was, but there was still quite a lot of people unhappy with the fact that this is going to be a $60 remaster with very minimal improvements. The game mostly looked the same, only at 1080p, with a 60fps frame rate, which that in and of itself was a big upgrade in my opinion. However, the Wii version of the game was available on the Wii U eShop digitally for only $20. So a lot of people felt burned by that $60 price point on Switch in spite of those upgrades. They probably felt even more burned when they realized that the original Wii release was $50, but what's even more interesting is that there was a deluxe bundle for $70, which yeah, before inflation is $10 more than the Switch version, but this came with a Wii Remote Plus, which I believe was like $50 or $60 at the time, and the soundtrack disc, so $70 for all that stuff was too good of a deal to pass up. Yeah, I remember quite a lot of people being upset about Skyward Sword HD, but that was before it came out. I don't know about you, but I feel like the general consensus around this remaster has gotten better ever since it came out, because it wasn't until people got their hands on it that they realized the text boxes were way faster. They cut out a lot of Fi's dialogue and interruptions, which was a huge improvement. And let's not forget about the new controls. There's an option to not have motion controls with the Joy-Cons, and you can just play the game with a controller. Yeah, it's a little funky that the sword and other items are controlled with the right stick, but I still prefer this method way more than motion controls, and I know I'm not alone with that as well. And we're gonna fast forward a few years to Super Mario RPG, the remake of the Super NES Classic. This game was indeed a huge surprise, but regardless, when the game came out, many of us realized that this was essentially the same exact game as it was on the Super Nintendo, just with some 3D graphics graphics, and localization fixes. There are little gameplay differences in there, sure, but nothing to really overhaul the main gameplay experience. 
And while I'm not vehemently opposed to this remake at all, there's just something about the original Super Nintendo game not being on Nintendo Switch Online that makes this remake feel kind of scummy. And this can also be applied to Mario vs. Donkey Kong, which came out earlier this year. Another remake, but priced a smidgen lower at $50, which in and of itself is kind of nice. However, there is no way to play the original game on the Switch through the Game Boy Advance NSO app. So Nintendo has basically locked you in to buying only the remake of this game. Now there is some additional content here, such as a two-player mode, as well as new levels, so I could definitely see some value here. But while we're on the subject of Donkey Kong and not having the original games on NSO, there was a time in 2018, right before Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze was going to come out on Switch, that Nintendo completely removed the original on the Wii U eShop. Talk about dirty. That is wild. And it's clear that Nintendo has continued this philosophy in some form by not putting the original versions of these remakes on Nintendo Switch Online. But don't even get me started on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake, which only runs at 30 frames per second on Switch instead of 60. Okay, really, that's kind of a debatable point. It's, it's really not that important. The Thousand Year Door remake is a perfectly reasonable game to put on Switch, especially because the original game is only playable on GameCube, and it cost way too much money to pick up on eBay, so this remake was a necessity. But now here we are with the new release of Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, which is a fully priced remaster of the Nintendo 3DS game from 11 years ago. And honestly, the upgrades they made, while noticeable, aren't too impactful, especially because the game is still locked at 30 frames per second. There's no doubt the HD version looks better, but not so much better that I'm rushing out to get it on my Switch because I already have it on 3DS. I don't need to play this game again, frankly. It's not as good is Luigi's Mansion 3, so that makes it even more underwhelming. And to top it all off, there's at least one missing effect in this game, the balloon transparency. I'm sure there's many other missing effects from the 3DS version, but this is the one I know about. But now we move on to Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. We've made an entire video on the missing graphical features from the Wii version and the 3DS version. You don't see certain shadows or glimmers or haze effects in the background, and hopefully most of these get fixed before the game comes out in January 2025, but who's to say really, it might not even surprise me if Nintendo says don't even bother fixing these because it's gonna make money anyway. And that is what I'm here to talk about. Why does Nintendo seemingly put not that much effort into their remasters, especially if they're going to release them at full price or close to full price? And to that, I answer you this. It's gonna make money anyway. Notice how most of these remasters, heck, all of them except for Skyward Sword, are all Mario games. The Mario brand is huge, and you know, it's even bigger now thanks to the Mario movie. So many people have Mario fever on the brain after that movie, so this is basically Nintendo looking into their catalog of games and saying, hey, this would be good to re-release, so would this, put them out on Switch, people will buy them. And you know, if you don't believe me, Let's look at the numbers. These games, no matter how much effort is put into them, are going to sell like gangbusters, especially that 3D All-Stars collection, almost 10 million copies. And you're probably watching this video really frustrated with me because I forgot to mention Metroid Prime Remastered, the big outlier in all of this. This is, without a doubt, Nintendo's best remaster of all time. Made by Retro Studios, they graphically overhauled the heck out of this game. There are highly detailed textures, wild particle effects, and a new feature on the HUD that says subscribe to Game Explain and hit that notification bell for more Nintendo videos like this one. What's really kind of a miracle about this remaster is how closely it feels like the original Metroid Prime, even though it looks 10 times better. It just completely made the original game unplayable for me, because this is the definitive Metroid Prime experience. There are some missing effects here, like the light reflecting off of surfaces, but those are just minor issues in the grand scheme of things. And you know how much this remaster costs? 
40 American dollars. And that's especially why people are frustrated with the price point of Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. $60 for this, as opposed to $40 for this. Why is Donkey Kong more valuable of a game, especially with all its missing graphical features, than Metroid Prime Remastered, one of the best looking Switch games of all time? Well, it goes back to the point I made earlier. The Mario brand is just infinitely more popular than the Metroid brand. Metroid games have not sold nearly as much as Mario games. In general, Metroid doesn't sell as well as other Nintendo franchises, and that's probably why a huge part of Prime Remastered was $40, is because Nintendo's trying to entice people into playing Metroid Prime for the first time. I've seen other people theorize this on Twitter, and I'm inclined to believe it. This has to go back to Metroid Prime 4's tumultuous development. They completely had to scrap the project from a previous developer, and instead they had to restart the project from scratch with Retro Studios at the helm, who were the ones who made the original Prime Trilogy and this amazing remaster. So I think part of why Prime Remastered is much cheaper than other Nintendo remasters is because they have to get people into this franchise to interest them in Prime 4 when that comes out next year. And combined with the fact that Metroid is not a historically best-selling franchise for Nintendo, thus the $40 price point. But yeah, Nintendo knows how much these games are going to make and at what costs, which is why Tears of the Kingdom was a $70 game, which they've stated was due to the amount of content within the game itself, and you know how much that game has sold? Over 20 million copies, even at that $70 price point, because guess what? Nintendo knows they can price it that high and people will still buy it. So right now you're probably asking, how can we fix this? How can we, the fans of Nintendo, tell them that we don't like these fully priced, low effort HD remasters and we vastly prefer the ones like Metroid Prime Remastered? Well, here's the thing I like to call voting with your wallet. If you don't like the low effort being put into the likes of Donkey Kong Country Returns HD, simply don't buy it. Really, just don't buy it. Even still, that might not be enough because there's a really great remaster called Metroid Prime that's out on the Switch now for $40. And let me tell you, if you haven't bought it yet, do that. Please buy Metroid Prime Remastered because not only is it a great game, but it would send Nintendo the message that we want more of these kind of remasters. And if you want to stick it to them even more, instead of buying Luigi's Mansion 2 HD this week, buy Beyond Good and Evil's 20th Anniversary Remaster for only 20 bucks. It already has more effort put into it than Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, and it's way cheaper. Look, I'm no business major or advertising major or what have you, but I understand the very simple premise of voting with your wallet. I've been doing this for years. I know this because I bought Metroid Prime Federation Force. Even if it wasn't the game I wanted, it was the franchise that I wanted to see thrive. And then what do you know? A year later, Metroid Prime 4 got announced. You're welcome, Metroid fans.